Hello everyone, welcome back to Beam Geek. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to project objects into a Revit topography. And our example case will be this model, in which I have all the trees above the topography. They are floating around. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to project them in their corresponding location on this topo surface. And the tree family that I have used in this tutorial is actually created by Beam Guru himself. Uh, shout out to him. If you just want to use the exact family that I have used in this tutorial, just head over to his website. Link to that is in the description down below. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start by opening Grasshopper. And first thing we need to do is we need to reference all the trees in our model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the category of this element. In, in this case, they are under planting category. So let's search for built-in categories, then type in planting, and let's select it. And to get all the elements under planting category, we need to convert it into a filter first. In this case, category filter. Let's connect our category, then using query elements and connecting our filter into the filter input. And let me remove the limit. So what we will get is all the elements, all the trees in our model, 35 of them. So we have the trees stored in the query elements. I'm just going to duplicate this and do the same thing, but this time we're going to do topography. So I'm going to replace planting with topography, and our topography is stored in the query elements node now. So let me open Rhino and let's get some geometry into it. So first I'm going to get the geometry of our topography and to do that we are going to use element geometry node. I'm going to connect my element and in return I will get some polyline curves, line-like curves and a mesh geometry. So as we did in the last tutorial I need to filter the mesh only and to do that we are going to use filter by type from Elefront package. So it's under Elefront, filter, and filter by type. So let's connect our geometry and let's connect a value list. Oops. Let's connect a value list to the object type input and let's select mesh. So now we have the mesh geometry only. I'm going to use zoom extend all and let's see what we have in Rhino. So this is the topography surface that we have. So we are done with the topography part. Let's continue with our family trees. So I need to get the location of my families in the Revit. And to do that, we are going to use element location node. I'm going to connect my elements and in return, I will get their location. So their location is stored in here. I think they are stored as planes in Rhino. So to visualize their exact location, I'm going to connect a point to there. And let me turn off the preview. So these are the exact location of our trees in Revit. So what we need to do is we need to project these surface in Z direction into this topography. And to do that, we are going to use project point node. So our geometry will be the topo surface and the points will be our locations. And I'm going to turn off. And these points are the new locations for our trees. So now we have our new locations. What we need to do is we need to set their new location in Revit. What do I mean by that? So I mean, so these three, for instance, will have its new location in, so in here, for instance, this point will be the new location of my tree in Revit. And the same thing is true for all of them. And to do that, we are going to use the element location node again. 
element location and our element will be my trees and their location will be these new points and if I connect this as a location and let's come back to Revit and just like that their location is set correctly and the beautiful thing is if I select one of them and if their elevation from level is set as the exact number exact distance to the level one and the same thing is true for each of them so thanks for watching i hope you learned something new in this video and see you in the next one bye bye